Hello, welcome back. It's Nourishing Necessities, Metakinetics, Breakdown, Build Up. Okay, working shoulders. I want to talk about again is this mysterious thing called shoulder. All right, it's made up of a deltoid, uh, scapula, bone, and some supportive muscles are considered a rotator cuff, which go into different parts of the body that aren't considered the shoulder, such as the chest, you know, and the side, right, the back. Right? So. The shoulder, deltoid, got a front deltoid, anterior deltoid, mid deltoid, or medial, posterior deltoid. And so these actions one, two, one, two, one. So now you see that little one, I'm getting a little extra, right? So I don't want to protract. I don't want to throw my anterior deltoid forward. I just want to stabilize. It's harder because my leg's in the way because I have to scoot down. All right, so if I'm from a straight position, open, close, open, close. Now, mindful not to immediately rotate around the back, extend out. Just stabilize, keep it easy. Focus from the arm float section, right? The bicep, tricep, elbow area to get those. If you focus and use the deltoid, all right, you wanna almost get out of the way and just allow it to be open. Because remember, this is the casual. We're not strengthening it yet, and we're not doing fast twitch. Good. So that's, that's the deltoid, the front and the back rehab. It's not doing much for the side though. What's the side do? The side does some abduction. Only to 90 degrees and then the deltoid shuts off, scalenes take over. And if you rise any higher, you could potentially grind cartilage. So you have to do that really mindfully, active in the neck and using the rotator cuff to do what? Rotate. Good, all right. So then you have rotation. Adding in that scapula, we'll do that later. For now, we're just focused on the stabilization. And we're gonna do sets, spirals for the screwdrivers in metakinetics. I have a flathead screwdriver, which is my hand. Coming in and out. Do a lot of those sets. Because other than that, what do you got? What do you got to rehab the deltoid? This, that don't help all that much. This. Come on now. So get in there and get out. Open, close, open, close. A lot of this takes a medial rotation anyway. It's a stretch of the back. Right? It's not really doing much for your deltoid. Right? So open it up, close it, open it. Now I'll admit here, this is not doing much for the mid deltoid. Right? So what do we do? Shrug just to get out of the way. Soft, don't ever stretch. No, no, say ever. But don't lift with too much tension. Soft, and then we go out to that abduction. Depress the scapula, not your spirit. Good. So a little action, rotator cuff, lifting, scapula, levator, scap, trapezius, which is all part of that shoulder unit, right? If the trapezius is not the neck, then what is it? It's the back. All right, well, you need it to work the scapulas, which work the shoulders, so-called shoulders. Good. And other than that, we have that in the beginning with the wrist action, and you get some deltoid action from the flexion. All right, keeping the shoulder though, right? In, out, in, out, arm float, bicep, tricep. And then we roll them. A lot of people, you know, some people, not a lot, I don't know the statistics, but people have scoliosis, lordosis, and kyphosis. So we want to watch to not add to those potential extremes if we've gotten ourselves into extreme or have been born with one. So the basic knowledge can help us get back to balance, but I'm not making any claims that a straight spine is the way to go, right? So some people were born uh, with a little more lordotic, some people a little more kyphotic, some people have a natural scoliosis. 
other people have put themselves in those positions from their lifestyle. So this is like type one, type two, diabetes thing. One can definitely be corrected. And the other one, I have high hope for that we can do a lot to service that person. Obviously, some things are coming in that are very calcified and, you know, there's a lot that we can do, right? And there's some things that we can't. So, so be honest and, and try to get to that point that works functional for you. So the reason I'm going into that is when we go into the shoulder roll. I can lift, push, go. That's, that would be uh, elevation of the scapula, levator scap and traps. That would be a pull forward, a protraction, a depression, and then squeezing of the shoulder blades. I don't know, I don't even know if this is going. All right, retraction, retraction of the scapula. All right, okay, so that would be elevation, retraction, depression, protraction. Depression, retraction, elevation. I, I wanna stop at elevation, right? So when we're rolling, all of those are there. But again, this is the casual one, so you're kind of getting out of the way. It kind of requires a little bit of spinal action. Look, a lot of connection from the feet to come up and over. Okay, so I call this one the bear because my good friend sent me a bear battling a cougar. Cougar was trying to mess with things, trying to come out of hibernation. And the cougar just playing with it. So people tell me animals don't have no sense of humor. This cougar was playing. It had a game. The bear wasn't playing. The bear was trying to get like, ah, it was cranky. So I enjoy the sound of that. I never knew that a bear actually made. <laughs> this one was like, ah, ah. So don't do that with your voice because it hurts and tough. But the rolling, rounding, relax. Rolling, rounding, relax. We don't need a whole lot of protraction for the rehab. So it's not a full four directions, it's almost three. All right, so, retraction, elevation, relaxation. I like it sounds better. Relax, retract, relax. Good. Now the other side back. Yeah. Key factors, again, you can start swimming, you can start really open and getting into the medial rotation. We'll do that a little bit later. Right now, stay within a plane. All right, so what I mean by that is I'm imagining there's a stick keeping my palms on the same horizontal level, my elbows on the same horizontal level like rowing. And I'm allowing my shoulders and scapula and all that stuff to do its thing. I'm stabilizing my neck, but I'm not stiffing it up because it needs to be stretched. So by doing this, we're pulling all that stuff out of the occipital region. Good. So again, screwdrivers, the bear. And I don't get too berry on me with the elbows out. So again, just shoulders. But getting out of the way, allowing the back to round a little bit is okay. Good. Reverse the ah, open that chest, heart opening. Ah. Good. Shoulders. Good. Rolling them out. Good. Now the rotator cuff. Good. Okay, so I'm coming in the slight massage towards my pec. There's lymph in there. Lymphatic drain massage says pull it in. So why not take this opportunity to massage it a little bit so long as you don't contort your shoulder and do anything extra. So rub side of the breast with your own bicep. And back down. Good. It's going to pump on a very subtle level. It's not going to get you out of lymphoma. <laughs> if you do it a thousand times, maybe, I don't know, not making any claims. But that helps move and pump the lymph of the chest. And part of the chest is part of the rotator cuff. I believe it's the pec minor. If I'm wrong about that, then it's the pec major. Ooh <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the pec minor. All right, so pec minor is in there. Terry's. Serratus, subscapularis. Good, hold it up. And float down. Now I call this the warm-up. What I'm warming up is these rotator cuff 
practices that come with almost every Tzigong that I've seen out there, which is the circles. The circles are amazing. But if you tell somebody with a rotator cuff injury to circle and you're not giving them proper instruction, they might actually do some damage. So I'm not saying don't move because the only way out of it sometimes is movement. So move slow, move soft, move easier, and do, do the full thing. So again, Tzigong would say, wake up, do this. Because of injuries that I had before, I couldn't do that. Uh, and, and, or come in this way. Come in this way. And it misunderstands. People are going way back. Helping getting the scapula, popping the ribs, doing all types of unnecessary things until we learn, until we get that level of mastery. So what they say, pump the limb. Come in, hold the ball. And rise. Good. And come back down. Cut to the back and slice. So you got some pack, serratus, even the deltoid, the shoulder. Right, I got some teres minor in there. Good. Now the reason I'm not keen on my, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of the anatomy and physiology terms. I've studied deeply, deeply. I've gotten so deep into the body and I haven't needed to explain in this way. And when I did explain to people, I didn't need to speak a scientific language to them. But I'm going back because it is a universal language and it is um, one way that we can all communicate. And really, in the name of science, in, in proper measurement, in the name of truth, I appreciate measurement, I appreciate that thing. Because the thing is, a lot of the... Uh, cultures that, that have dissected in order to get this measured statement um, are in some ways still only catching up to what others have received through experience and maybe meditation, intuition, and finding and articulating it in a more poetic way than a scientific way. Um, Definitely some shortcomings coming from those that hadn't measured, right? So it's good to integrate and put these things together. And as I'm talking, it should just be rolling your shoulders, rolling them back. You never get enough rolling. If you want to start alternating the roll of the shoulders, I think it's better to put the feet together. It just gives you a little more stability. And then when you do it from here, it's more of a spine thing. You know, put a lean or whatever. I'll walk more into that. But again, the wider your legs are, the more they're going to get in the way of the arm. So, especially when you alternate. All right, so rolling back, forward. Right, screwdriver. So you're going to prep circles, inside, inside. In the metakinetic series, you would hold. After a long period of holding, we float down. Reverse. And rise. Reverse. And rise. That's the other set. So you'll feel this more towards the back. Maybe subscapularis. Lats. Or the outer edge. Hold it up. And now the elbows come back in. Wrist arc, the pinkies down, 45 degree like a rooftop, shining those palms towards the center line until you get to the belly button and waist. And you trace the hula hoop on the side, the girdle vessel. And then you softly with the breath in because the scalenes are supporting the shrug. Inhale, shrug. Exhale, slowly start to peel those feathers, those fingers up right away and spread your wings as straight as the elbow can be without too much strain or pain. That's your goji tendon apparatus telling you, slow down, don't go any further without tearing. Micro tears uh, happen and they will keep happening. Some people call it lactic acid buildup. Other things are lactic acid buildup, but a lot of times it's confused because you did micro tears because you went too far in the tendon. Right, so ease into it, ease into it. So you see my hands are a little bit lower than my shoulders. Again, I can't go any higher than 90 degrees anyway, so that's 100% max. 
I don't need to be on the max when I'm learning something. Press those palms, reach those fingers, more important, straighten the elbows and the get up here. Just gonna relax into it. It feels heavy, it feels achy. It's like, ah, it's a lot. Come up and down. Again, soft shrug. Just shallow and press. You can breathe through the nose, good. If you can't breathe through the nose, then learn to breathe through the nose before it goes away. Keep the tension out of the shrug. And because of all that I had the tension I hold in my shoulders and injuries I've had, especially in the rotator cuffs, this one is very hard, but it's the most rewarding. So when it gets into that mode of exercise, I'm pushing, I'm like, ah, I trick my body. I'm gonna breathe in and under release which would be an exercise, a yang, a press, I'm actually going to sigh. Sigh of relief. <sighs> now, tricking the psychology in a warm-up is okay. Tricking the psychology in a real situation, maybe not. Give yourself a false confidence. <sighs> but it is good to be relaxed. All right, let's recap here. Screw job. The bear. Ah. Reverse. Rolls the rocks. Ah. Ah. Boom, prep circles. Inside circle up. Clap and celebrate. Clap and celebrate. You don't have to do the clap, but a lot of people's uh, interior deltoids and pectoral issues may cause more, be exasperated by trying to force your hands together. So keep that space until you know that you can do it with the hands closed. Hold, float down, reverse and rise. Make sure again, you got enough breath to fuel this operation. Elbows assists, wrist arc the palms downward, cleansing through the chakra center. Still get the Dan Tien gathering around the girdle vessel. Slow shrug, soft shrug to shell and press. With a sigh of relief. Hold those. Now the end, we paint down, nice and easy. Slow it out. And then we would begin the head and neck. 